Our brain is obsessed with finding patterns because patterns equals predictability and predictability equals safety. And our brain's number one job is to make sure that we survive. Pattern recognition has been touted as the key determinant of a person's general intelligence. And whether we realize it or not, this innate ability of ours is being used every single time we make a decision, down to simple things like crossing the road. It all sounds like we're pretty data-driven, right? Well, yes, except that our brain is also capable of making stuff up. One of the most commonly known examples is the confirmation bias, where we cherry-pick and create patterns to reinforce our views. Here are four more cognitive biases related to pattern recognition and how we can turn this to our advantage. The availability heuristic is a mental shortcut that we use especially for quick decisions. When we are trying to extract information related to a specific topic, we often remember those that are recent and or vivid. This is efficient for simple, low-stakes evaluation like picking a restaurant or choosing a birthday gift for a friend. But for more complex situations, when we only utilize what we remember, we are making decisions of a very skewed and limited data set. We also want to be aware that media and technology also influence the information available to us. Media tends to favor negative headlines because they sell better, and content platforms curate what we see based on our user behavior. So, to a certain extent, if we do not actively validate what we've been pushed, we are perpetually susceptible to the availability heuristic. For example, many of us overestimate the risk of plane crashes compared to car accidents because plane crashes are more widely reported and memorable. But in reality, car accidents are far more common and we are actually much safer in the skies than on the road. Now imagine a group of girlfriends have arrived at a restaurant to celebrate Emily's birthday. While waiting for their food, the girls decided to have a round of tequila shots. As they passed the salt bottle around, Daphne spilled some on Emily. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize the cap is loose. Daphne apologized. Emily smiled and brushed the salt off her dress, thinking to herself, Such a klutz. However, when Emily passed the salt bottle on, she too spilled some in the process. Oh gosh, yeah, the cap is loose. This is the actor-observer effect. It refers to our self-serving tendency in attributing causes for behaviours. When it comes to ourselves, we tend to think that our negative actions are caused by external, situational factors outside of our control, like the bottle cap being loose. But when it comes to others, we tend to attribute their actions to internal, dispositional factors such as their character or personality. Conversely, when it comes to positive actions, our successes must be due to our hard work and ability. But that of others? Pff, they're probably just lucky. One reason for the actor-observer effect is the difference in information availability. We know our own character and we have visibility of the situation. Therefore, we are able to draw the line between internal and external factors influencing our actions. But when it comes to others, regardless of how well we know them, we are drawing patterns with less information. Sometimes this helps us to see things more clearly, but it also creates room for cognitive biases. Let's go back to the birthday celebration. After a delicious meal, the girls beat their goodbyes. As Emily turned to head to the subway, she stepped on a loose pebble and found herself face down on the pavement. The girls rushed to help her up when Daphne gasped. Oh, Em, it must be the salt you spilled. It's bad luck. This is the post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy, which is Latin for after this, therefore because of this. This is a logical fallacy where we falsely attribute causation based on the order of events. In this case, Emily must have tripped because she spilled salt earlier on. This fallacy arises from the human tendency to create narratives to try to link events in a meaningful way, often leading us to infer causation where none exists. This cognitive trap can be further reinforced by confirmation bias. 
where we focus on evidence that supports our preconceived notions and ignore evidence to the contrary. Besides superstitions, we can also find this in efforts by institutions and other large-scale organisations. For example, the government implements a new economic policy and the economy improves shortly after. We are inclined to conclude that the policy single-handedly resulted in the improvement without considering other variables or underlying trends such as regression to the mean. For complex situations like this, we should be more mindful of this fallacy to separate optics from reality and be more conscious whom the credit belongs to, if it goes to anyone. Lastly, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Imagine a cowboy named Joe who shoots his gun at the side of a barn many times. After he finishes shooting, he walks up to the barn and notices that some of his shots are clustered together in one area. To make it look like he's a great sharpshooter, Joe paints a bull's eye around the cluster of holes. Joe's not actually a great shot. He just made it look that way by ignoring all the other holes and focusing on the ones that happened to be close together. The Texas sharpshooter fallacy is when someone picks out a random pattern or cluster in data and then claims it's significant, ignoring all the other data that doesn't fit. This is similar to confirmation bias, but instead of actively seeking out information that confirms a pre-existing belief, Texas sharpshooter fallacy attributes significance to random data clusters after the fact. At the beginning of this video, it was stated that pattern recognition is a key determinant in intelligence. But what we've also seen is that the more active our brain is in recognizing patterns, the more susceptible we become to faulty reasoning and decision making. Studies have shown that people who gravitate towards superstitions and conspiracy theories tend to have a higher inclination to search for patterns. The key difference between a critical thinker and an irrational believer is the awareness of when our brain is making stuff up. What this also means is that all of us have the potential to be more logical and sharper, especially if we have been seeing patterns where there is none, simply by reminding ourselves to incorporate mindfulness into our thinking. The more self-aware we are of our thoughts, the better we can check ourselves and make clearer decisions.